and to be a transformational high level point guard, you've got to be like a finely tuned race car. If I was a race car, I'd probably be green. What color would you be? Thanks for telling me, I appreciate that. So let's dive into race car. And the first two letters in race car are the R and the A. And the R and the A stand for race the ball from arc to arc. This is a point guard commandment. And if you care more about looking cool than being effective, you'll never be a great point guard and you'll never be a high level top speed race car either because it's hard and it's not cool to be constantly putting pressure on the defense by racing the ball from arc to arc because the fact of the matter is nothing good really happens between the two arcs for the offense. In fact, only bad things happen for the offense. A lot of times that's when turnovers happen or the defense can trap or pressure you and there's not a lot of shots taken unless your logo Lillard between the two arcs and there's really not a ton of scoring passes made in the half court from far away from the rim. It is the dead zone and that's why we call it the racetrack. It's the racetrack from arc to arc. Get through it as fast as you can. It's not special to be a point guard that just walks the ball to the floor. It's not special to be a point guard that plays as fast as they can at top speed all the time and turns the ball over. But what is special is to be able to race the ball from arc to arc, but also be completely under control, not skid out, not crash, not have a 12 car pile up, but just lap after lap after lap, consistent speed, steering, precision. That's a race car, that's you. And as we race the ball from arc to arc, what you'll find is it unlocks so many easy buckets for both you and your teammate because the disorganized defense is every possession. I talk to a lot of high level coaches, a lot of college coaches, a lot of pro coaches, and I can constantly ask them, what's the hardest thing for you to teach your teams? And every single time in their top couple, they list transition defense. It's the hardest thing to teach. It's the hardest thing to do well. So why would you as a race car, ever let your opponent off the hook? Why would you ever give them the advantage of allowing them to set up? Nah, we push the pedal down and we put the pressure on the defense because there's a moment in time in every defensive possession where that defense is disorganized. There's two people on the ball. There's no one guarding the ball. There's three people on the right-hand side of the floor. There's no one seeing the basketball. Someone fell down. There's a moment in time where that defense is disorganized. And if we walk the ball up the court, we won't be able to take advantage of that moment in time. But if we race the ball up the court, we will be able to take advantage of that moment in time. For example, let's see, right here. This isn't an obvious fast break situation. In fact, right now, the defense might seem like they're fairly organized, but because the ball was raced up the floor, the defense doesn't know who they have. In fact, this defender right here is gonna actually guard a least dangerous player. And what you're gonna see is they're gonna get a wide open layup. Check it out. Disorganized defense, wide open layup. They didn't guard the rim. The number one thing, you gotta get back, protect the basket. Nah, because they were disorganized because the ball was raced up the floor. And really, race just means to push the ball at a pace that makes the defense uncomfortable, that puts a little bit of panic into the defense. And while there's many ways to race the basketball, the first one being be able to race the basketball with the dribble, you gotta understand that most players, when they race with the dribble, they really only have two speeds. They have standing still and going as fast as they can. Now, if a race car only had those two speeds, it would be very dangerous, out of control, and cause lots of accidents. You don't wanna be that type of a race car. You must be able to shift gears. In fact, race cars have many gears, and the best race car drivers are the ones that can utilize those gears effectively. How many gears do you have? How many gears do you play with? Because I've watched a lot of high school games where players are just playing as fast as they can the entire time, or they're just super slow and never make anything happen you got to have a bunch of gears. Let me give you the six gears that racing point guards play at. The first one is a walking speed. And I see this occasionally, but I could see players using this walking speed a lot more, especially against pressure and especially in the half court. In fact, one of the greatest compliments of Luka Doncic is this. 
he plays at his own speed. He doesn't let the defense speed him up. Does the defense speed you up? Can you shift gears whenever you want? Do you constantly shift gears so the defense doesn't know what's coming? Like a great pitcher, do you have a change up? Do you have multiple pitches? Can you keep them guessing? Or are you obvious? I think I, you know what type of racing point guard you want to be. So the first speed is a walking speed. The second speed is a skipping speed. Hmm, what type of point guards play with a skip a lot? If you said Steve Nash and Sue Bird, two of the best point guards of all time, you would be right. So if two of the best point guards of all time skip around the court, why don't you? You're missing out if you don't have a skipping speed. Second one. Third one, a jogging speed. Gosh, it's great to throw that in there. A jogging speed. The fourth one, I call it like a trot. It's faster than a jog, but it's not your sprint, right? It's kind of that middle. It's, it's faster than a jog, but it's not all out. That's a trot. That's one that most point guards could use a lot more because you have a lot more vision, a lot more control. You got a lot more acceleration from a trot than you do from your fifth speed. Your fifth speed is your sprint. That's your fifth speed. Now, the majority of point guards only have those five speeds, right? Walk and skip, and then we got our trot, or sorry, we got our jog, trot, and sprint. Most point guards only have those five, but there's a few point guards that have that special sixth gear, that gotcha speed, that overdrive. Russell Westbrook has that sixth gear. Darren Fox has that sixth gear, where they can be going at a sprint and turn it on and explode by to the rim. If you don't have that gotcha speed, listen carefully. If you haven't been blessed with that gotcha speed, you'd better play at the lower gears more. So you have something to shift up, sh shift up into. That was almost bad. Shift up into. So let's see an example of what racing with the dribble can actually look like. Donovan Mitchell. Off of a May basket, here's another thing you gotta know. You can race off of a May, you can race off of a miss, you can race off of a steal, you can race off of a, of a, of a, a defensive rebound. You don't need numbers to race. Race first, race always. Donovan Mitchell racing with a dribble, telling his teammates to attack. The defense is disorganized. You will never get more disorganized defense than you will when racing the ball from arc to arc in transition. Now, Occasionally, you might race and get yourself a layup, but more often you race, the defense is disorganized so much so that they collapse to you and you can feed it out to your teammates for wide open shots. It would be much harder to get against a set defense in the half court, like this. LeBron just races, he gets a piece of the paint, and the defense is so disorganized that Josh Hart gets a really nice, easy, wide open layup. Good things are gonna happen. If LeBron hadn't raced the ball, Josh Hart would have never gotten that layup. If LeBron played at his normal kind of uh, mid-season speed, then he probably wouldn't have raced it up. But he turned it on. He went old school LeBron for us right there. Made the defense panics to get Josh Hart that nice and easy layup. Another way you can race is with the pass. And in fact, if I were to go and do this over again, I would have put pass first because most of you race with the dribble first. But I would encourage you, whenever you have someone up ahead of you, that you can get the ball to, get it up with the pass. Here's why. One, it actually puts more panic in the defense because the pass will actually get the ball between the arcs faster than the dribble. Here's the second thing. You actually would have a better chance of scoring if you race it up with the pass. Because when you race it up with the pass, then the defense will focus on the ball and you can sprint into scoring catches and scoring positions. You have a better chance of scoring if you can race it ahead with the pass. Let's see what it looks like. Lonzo Ball is one of the best to race it up with the pass. Disregard LeBron's travel there, it is LeBron James. The third way that you can race is with a swoop. Okay, and this might be an image that helps. You want to swoop wings up. Okay, like a, like a bird swoop wings up. Like you think of like an eagle and they're just gliding around, right? That's just gliding speed. Well, gliding is how most players run the floor, especially off of the other team making a shot 
or especially off of kind of like not an obvious fast break situation. They just kind of glide up the floor. But there's a special few that actually swoop with their wings up where they're like diving down upon prey where it is full speed swooping, not gliding around the floor, but swooping around the floor. Swoop, wings up, you will get two to three more easy buckets per game. You'll put a ton more pressure on the defense. This is what that can look like. PGC grad Charlie Jones, swoop. You can see those couple of steps there in the middle where his wings go up. Watch it, right here, wings up, swoop. Look at the speed that Charlie is moving at compared to the other players. Watch the speed of Charlie compared to the other players. Watch 20 compared to the other players. Jog, glide, glide, swoop. A point guard is a race car. Everyone wants to drive a race car. 